proper schedule. So give me a thumbs up if you wanted more sleep. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a lot of thumbs. <laughs> yeah, same. It threw off my, spring break threw off my schedule. I was waking up on the later side as well. Um, but I'm glad you guys are back and that you're joining us here. I missed you guys. Um, and it's, it's fun hanging out with you guys in second period here. So one thing I do wanna say is you guys did a fantastic job on your quiz. I know you guys have probably forgotten completely about your quiz from um, the one we took on Thursday before spring break, but you guys did a fantastic job on that. And that really just wrapped up our linear functions um, unit with working with linear equations, the linear graphs, um, finding slope, and you guys were using, I saw a lot of the color codes with the rise and the run, the red and the green on your graphs. I thought that was fantastic. Um, and then I saw you guys using the whole perp, the whole magenta and blue for your equations. And a lot of you, I think we had a really good average for, for this period on your quiz score. So good job. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start off with showing you guys your agenda for this week. So if you guys go into Google Classroom, I want you to go ahead, to go ahead and click on Classwork. You guys can see my screen, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Go ahead and click on Classwork. And we are gonna have your agenda now at the very top of your week so that you know to click on it daily and you're not struggling to find it in between all of these other assignments. So it's the first item on week five, your week five agenda. I want you guys to click on that. And since today is Monday, you should be clicking on Monday. So remember, we're simplifying these things here for you guys, making sure you're a little more organized. It has a breakdown of what we're doing today. And it also has any announcements you need to be made aware of for today and the week. So for today, we're gonna to be working on a Desmos activity that's titled Doc Shading Grid, day one. We're also gonna be looking at our week five notebook, completing some notes after that activity, only one page of notes, and then we have a your turn. And as soon as we're done with today's um, period, we should be able to have that recording of the lesson up here. So one thing we wanna make sure you're aware of is that if you see these words that are underlined, they have a link um, connected to it. So if you click on that, it opens up each of those assignments and it takes you directly to those links. So by clicking it, and you can do that now if you wanna be prepared for our next step, you can click on the first assignment there, which is titled Docs Shading Grids. It takes you to your class kick, I'm sorry, to your Google Classroom assignment. What you wanna do is click on Docs Shading Grid. So if you wanna be prepared for what we're moving on, I'm still talking about our agenda, but that gets you situated and ready to go for our next um, assignment. So you will see your video of the lesson. We, um, we will also have a homework assignment. Um, other than that, let me read your announcements. Don't forget to come to tutoring if you are having issues. We are starting a new unit, which is titled Linear and Versus Exponential Functions. So we still are continuing to see our linear functions that's not going away. So if you were having a hard time with the linear side on your in the first unit, you're gonna be exposed to it again, okay? So if you weren't quite understanding it, maybe it'll be more simplified in this unit. And on top of that, we're throwing on a new function. But come to tutoring if you are having issues. We are going to be having tutoring today from 1210 to 110. And we're also gonna have tutoring on Wednesday from 1230 to two. Just all you have to do is follow that tutoring link. And also other assignments is that all assignments are due today by 4 p.m. They were initially due on Friday, but remember we gave you that extension to turn them in um, to Monday and you still can turn them in even after today. But please pay attention to your due dates. Also, we will be having us our second quiz next Friday, April, April 23rd. All right. Other than that, there are 52 days left in this semester. We're in week five, and I believe um, we said that there is like seven weeks left. So we're almost to that halfway mark. And unfortunately, we don't have any more breaks between now and the end of the school year. But they're going to fly by, honestly. 
with everything that we do here. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead. And I, was that someone new joining us? Yeah. Okay. So if you're just joining us now, you wanna make sure you're in Google Classroom, click on Classwork, and <clears throat> we introduced the agenda before we went on break. So for week five, click on that week five agenda. It's telling you to click on this daily. That's what you wanna do as soon as you are joining us every single morning is go to your agenda, click on it, and click on the day that we're in, which today is Monday, has a breakdown of our assignments that we're working on today, little checklist too to mark to help you guys see what it is that you have done and what you haven't done. Announcements for today. And that is it. All right. So let me and the security check is all all done. Um, both Kevin's the only um, I still need yours and Sebastian I need yours. <clears throat> Yeah, so don't forget to drop in your date of birth so that we make sure it is you and not someone else. Did you want to talk to them about the video? Yes, yes, that's true. Okay, so what we're going to be doing today is recording. We always record um, our, our classes, but today I'm going to remember I talked to you guys about me having to turn in um, recordings of myself teaching you guys a lesson um, as as an assignment and we would like for some of you to have your um, cameras on and you get sign those permission slips. Yeah, you guys remember. So at this time, we are gonna be practicing recording this, um, this today's lesson. So at this time, if those of you that are willing to turn on your cameras, if you guys can go ahead and turn your cameras on for the recording, um, if you had the permission slip signed, which we have a couple of you, but it, I would really appreciate it if you guys would be willing to turn on your cameras and um, <clears throat> and also incur I encourage you to unmute yourself whenever we're talking about um, any of these assignments and I'm ask asking questions, checking for your understanding. But let's see, we're looking for at least three people to turn on their cameras. I think we have, do we have one? Um, no ceiling yeah I, I, I love the ceiling like views all the time so when you're turning on your camera we do need you pete to be on screen and i know some of you had told us you were willing to do it but i know it might be monday and that might be like a surprise I'm like what i'm not ready to be on camera <laughs> all right so maybe what we can do is switch it to tomorrow then since I know it's kind of short notice, but let me know in the chat if there are any of you that are willing to turn on your camera tomorrow. Let me know in the chat. I know it's very last minute. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I'm getting some of you saying, yeah, tomorrow is fine. <laughs> okay. So again, I mentioned this at the very, very beginning of um, when you guys met me. I am a student, I'm, I'm a student learning how to teach, but part of that is me um, submitting a, like an assignment, a recording of me teaching you guys a lesson. Um, and what my professors would like to see is see students actually in the video recording of the lesson to see how you're responding to me teaching you. Um, and to see that I'm actually teaching students, <laughs> that I'm not just talking to myself and pretending to have students. So it would be very, very helpful if you guys um, would turn on your camera tomorrow. But I know being at home, it could be a little tricky. And if you're not comfortable with that, then also just let me know in the chat as well. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and have you guys go into <laughs> Oh, thank you. I know um, some of you are saying, but you do so well anyways. Um, I know, but it is something I have to turn in to my, to, to, to my professors, to the state, to evaluate how I'm doing. They need to see how I'm doing and they need to see how you guys are responding to me. Um, but 
I know it can be tricky with distance learning, so don't feel too pressured. All right, what we're gonna go ahead and do is go into our first activity for today, which is the docs shading grid day one. So everybody follow me to that assignment by clicking on that link. It should take you into Google Classroom because that's where we have the actual link to that assignment. And as soon as you click on it, if you're logged into um, to Google, then it'll just open up the activity for you. But if you're not, then you'll have to type in your first name and last name and click on go. And for now, it's paused. But we're used to working through these Desmos activities already. And I'll unpause it as soon as I see most of you joining us on here. So I'll give you guys a couple seconds. Also, guys, if you guys need to uh, having internet issues and you guys log off and log back in, if you guys once you guys are back in, if you guys can send me a message with your birthday again, again, yeah, it's just yeah, awesome, you know, awesome times. <laughs> I have no idea who those people are. Yeah, I was wondering. I they're not familiar, but maybe a. Sibling. And no, this class is is jam packed full. So I know that I wouldn't be getting any students in this class. All right, no. everyone. Um, let me see. I I only see. I haven't seen anybody on here on Desmos. Remember, we can see who's joining the activity. So if you're not here. If you're not logging into your Desmos activity, okay, then um, we can actually see that. So I'm going to go ahead and walk through the steps again. I need you to go into Google Classroom. And if you're having issues, like the link isn't oh. working, we had some people saying that the link wasn't working. Yeah, so I already got one saying, has the assignment been posted? I don't see it. Okay, period, this is period five. Let me double check. Period five, if you go into classwork. Yeah, it's there. It is there. Go it to, is there. Mm -hmm. if you go, it's in the link. Yeah, if you go to week five, the agenda, <laughs> we're in Monday, click on Docs Shading Grid. So that first, first assignment here on the list, that's what you wanna click on. And it takes you directly to this link that you want to click on here. So if you're having troubles accessing that link, let me know. I mean, I can also put it in the chat, but we want to get you used to going through to your agenda, clicking on that, unless I have a different, let me no. see, how come I don't see them on here? I see people. Okay. I see 16. Oh, so then I including me and you. Oh. There we go. There we go. Oh, yeah, now I see them. Oh, how weird. Now I'm having issues. Did you refresh your screen? I, I once I did, I saw them pop up. <laughs> so you guys aren't ignoring me. No. <laughs> All right. Yes, I see you higher brown. Thank you, Dodge. <laughs> All right. I see Marifed, Melissa, Emily, Lisette, Jimena, Natalie, Jessica, Kevin, Kimberly, Catherine. Oh, more of you coming up. Sammy, Jennifer, Jose, Daniel, Danica. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Yes, I see you guys on here. So again, let us know if you have not been able to get to that assignment, but the people that were telling me about their Connection issues are on here now, so that's good. All right, so we are starting a brand new unit today. Let me click go on that. Uh, 
and now I'm having issues still. What's up with today? There, there it is. <laughs> I don't know. It's coming back from spring break. See, we're rusty too. <laughs> well, like my computer, like yeah, all of a sudden true. glitching out. That's true. We had a lot of technical difficulties in first period, guys. Like we, yeah. we lost connection of the whole Zoom. We had to come back in. So if that happens here, um, go ahead and click back on the link and we will be resuming class if any of those technical difficulties happen. Yeah, my computer decided to completely glitch out and close everything. And then I had to, yeah, it was bad. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started now that I see everybody. But I'm going to go ahead and restrict you to the first slide for now. All right, and it's wide open now. So in this activity, we're going to be taking a look at some patterns and making connections between those patterns in our new unit. So what we're going to be working on is examining the patterns below for grid pattern A and grid pattern B. And you're going to write the number of colored rectangles in each grid. And you're going to continue the patterns in stages four. So when you're in the pencil mode, you want to click, you can, you don't have to, but it helps if you um, click on these colors and switch them when you're working with these different patterns. So for example, grid pattern A is red. I'm going to click on that red and I'm going to follow the directions. It says to examine the pattern and write the number of colored rectangles. So write the number down that you see um, in the rectangles that are colored for grid pattern A. In the first grid, I see there are two rectangles colored in. So I'll write the number two. Count how many you see in the next one. One, two, three, four. And in the next stage, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that is all you're doing. You're going to count the rectangles that are shaded. You're gonna write the number of rectangles that are shaded in right next to it. And what you're going to do is take a look and examine what patterns do we have between these grids that give us two to get to four, to get to six. And if we you continue that pattern, how many rectangles should we shade in here? So you're gonna give me the number of rectangles that should be shaded in here, the number of rectangles that should be shaded in for the fifth stage. And after you figure out the number of rectangles that we should have shaded, you're gonna go in here and literally shade in the number of rectangles that we need. So you have two patterns. You have the red grids, which is titled grid pattern A, and the second pattern, which is grid pattern B, and that is in the blue color. So you can switch to the blue, do the same thing, write how many grids are colored in. In this case, we have two. In this, and in um, stage two, we have four, but I'm gonna let you finish all of these off here use the patterns that we have to continue on with your stage four and five. So I'll give you guys about five minutes to analyze that. And then we'll come back and share our answers. But Marifer, you're doing great. Emily, fantastic, keep going. There's two patterns. Don't forget to do the blue one if you are done with the red one. Lizette, good job. Jimena, very good. Natalie, good job completing that pattern. Just make sure you color in the squares. All right, you're all catching on to the first grid. I'm interested in seeing what's gonna happen in the blue pattern. <laughs> Um, is anybody else's activity paused? Let me see. Oh, I don't, I actually, oh, wait. Um, if, you, if it says your activity is paused, do me a favor and refresh it and see if that helps because it should, it shouldn't be paused. It should um, let you work on it just as it is letting me. Just refresh it. So hit that like refresh arrow here. And it should be good.
It's still paused. Did you did you start the activity and then get out and come back in? Because I see work on your page. Oh wait, no, that's not it. All right, guys, we're having a lot of weird activity with people trying to log in that aren't here. I'm locking the, the, the session. So if you do end up having internet issues, send me a message to let you back in and mm -hmm. I'll unlock it for that. But I've had like six people try and log in that aren't part of this class. One of them being one of my kids from la from the, my next period. So I need to have a talk with him, finding out how he got the link for this class. Or maybe so somebody- These guys, don't be sharing my links to anybody. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, or I'm going to have to put it so that it's only in Aries and you guys are not allowed to like have the link separate. Or I'm going to have to add like a password and all that stuff. So do not be sharing my information. All right. Try that and see if that helps. So close it and try the link I gave you. And let me know if it's paused still. All right, I am going to take a look and see how you guys are doing. For the most part, everybody has the first set done. Oh, perfect. Okay, good. I'm glad. Okay, so that worked for you, got it. All right, so um, anybody wanna let me know either by unmuting themselves or by um, typing it in the chat, what pattern did you notice is going on with grid pattern A? That seems to be the one that everybody caught on to real quick. Yes, good job. But what exactly, yeah, there you go, good job. As soon as I was saying that. So we see that grid pattern A is using addition, a constant pattern of adding the number two. So from two to get us to four, if we add two to that, we get four. So two plus two is four. If we do the same to four, four plus two is six, that gets us six. So to continue this pattern, we would have had to add two, which gives us eight, and we shade in eight of these rectangles. Doesn't have to be perfect as long as we see those shaded in. And then our next stage, that would mean we add two again and we get 10. Fantastic, good job, you guys. All right, so now we wanna take a look at the second grid pattern, which is grid pattern B in the blue. And it might throw you guys off a little because this third stage changes. So in our first stage, we have two. Our second stage, we have four of these rectangles that are shaded. And in the third stage, we now have eight that are shaded. So what pattern do we notice between two to get us to four and four to get us to eight? Did anybody pick up on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so some of you tried the addition. Some of you said, well, let me try adding two. That gets me four. But now I can't add two because that would be six and I have a number eight. So Can it's not a, try. yeah, good job. So it's not a constant adding pattern. That means we had to try something else. And I heard it right now. We said we have to multiply. So two times two gets me four. If I do that to that four, does it get me eight? Four times two is eight, yes. So now we notice, wait a minute, they switched it up on us and we're actually doing multiplication now. So if you multiply the eight by two, you should get your next stage and then multiply that number by two to get your last stage. So see if you can come up with the correct number after that.
Sammy, fantastic job. You got it. So when we're talking about a pattern, we're talking about a pattern is consistent. So that whatever we do to the previous number, we do to the next number each time. So up here, we constantly added by two. It didn't change. Notice it was consistent. In the second grid, we are noticing that multiplying by two gets us the next stage. Two times two gets us four. Four times two gets us eight, which means we'll have to do eight times two. Anybody that knows what eight times two is? 16. Yes, perfect. So we would have to write in the number 16. And that means we can shade in our 16 squares, 16 rectangles. Up here we have 10 of them. And then we need six. One, two, three, four. There we go. And that is 16. To get that final stage, you had to continue the pattern and multiply by two. So what I do want to say is if you have a calculator available, you can use your calculators um, if you're not too comfortable with multiplying or just to check your multiplication as well. There's nothing wrong with using calculators. We're not looking to see if you can if you know how to multiply. We really just want to make sure that you can look at these patterns and examine them and get to the next stage. So for the next stage, we would have to do 16 times 32. Sorry, 16 times 2, which a lot of you are giving me the answers here in the chat. And that is 32. So for this last stage, I need you guys to color in 32 of those rectangles. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. There you go. All right, so keep these patterns in mind. When I'm gonna move you guys, well, I'm gonna go ahead and open up slide two. So you can go ahead and click on the next slide. And if you're not quite finished with one, that's okay because we're gonna be going back and forth between these two. On slide two, you're going to describe some similarities. So what do you notice is the same between these two grids and some differences? What are some things that you noticed that were different about these two um, grids, the shading patterns? So there is no right or wrong answer. It's just, what are you observing? What do you see is the same between these two patterns? And what do you notice that is different between the two patterns? So give me about a couple of sentences there, as long as you tell me the same similarities and differences. Anything you see. Oh, good job, Melissa. Good job, Jimena. Natalie, keep going. You're on the right track. Oh, yeah, Jessica, very good. I like that response. All right, I'm gonna give you guys a couple more seconds and then I'm gonna see if anybody would like to share their response. Ah, yeah, Lizette, very good. Yeah, that's a good observation. Oh yes, Natalie, very good one. Very good observation. So I'm stupid. What happened? You know how I was like, oh, there's one student from next period that's trying to get in. No, he's in this class. It's just that I was looking at my roster for last period. So are you sure? Yes. Well, maybe I was looking at the wrong name, but no. Oh. I could have sworn that was no, no, he's period. he's in it's because I still have period like first period open instead of second period. Yeah. Yeah, he's in, he's in this period. He's in fifth. Oh, no. How sad. 
<laughs> did he send, send you a recorded? message? Did he send yeah, he you sent me a message? Yeah, but uh, he, he'll be logging in right now. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, my bad. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna show you guys what you guys are saying right now, but I'm gonna anonymize these so you don't see. All right, so this is what you guys are writing and letting us know. So they don't show your names because what Desmos lets us do is anonymize them, meaning it takes off your name and it gives you like a little alias. So there's Olga Toski Todd. There's a Pierre in here. Some of you are French. <laughs> so this is what a lot of you are saying is that they both start with two and are adding in one pattern and are multiplying in the other. Very, very good. A similarity is that they both seem to start with the number two or two shaded rectangles and four, but then it changes after that. A difference is that one is multiplying and the other one does have an adding pattern. Very good. Um, there's very, very good responses. A lot of you guys are noticing those very um, important details. One similarity is both we have to go positive and do not subtract. Good. Something different that I see that they're different colors. Yeah, that's a difference. One is red, one is blue. Very good. Um, they each have different numbers. In the first one, we add, and the second one, we multiply. Yes, very good. There's some of you actually telling us we're adding um, they're, the patterns. Oh, I love this one. They both had patterns involving the number two, and that's correct. The only difference is that they're using the two in a different manner for these patterns. So all of you guys are coming up with these very, very good responses. So what we're going to do is I'm going to move you guys along to slide three. So again, I'm leaving this blank because there is no right or wrong answer. It's just what you guys are observing. Um, but as you can see, a lot of you were on the right track there. All right, so for slide three, for slide three, we are going to be bringing over that information we have um, from, our from our shading grids, our patterns, and we're gonna putting them into a table and seeing what happens when it's graphed. So let's go on over. You're gonna have to go back and forth between one and three. Notice the grid pattern was in the color red. When we're talking about bringing the numbers over, we're talking about the number of rectangles that were shaded. In the first um, stage, we had two rectangles shaded. Then we had four, six, eight, and 10. What I want you to do is go and take that information into your table, type down those numbers. For the first stage, we had two rectangles four rectangles in the second one, six in the third, eight and 10. And what you can do for those of you that are willing to take on the challenge is continue this pattern if you were to be looking at a six stage and attain the 10th stage and the 100th stage. What would those numbers look like? But notice that as soon as I put these values in here, we start to see a graph. We see what is going on between the, the first grid. And then what you're going to do is give me the values from the second grid, grid pattern B. So the blue rectangles, how many did you have shaded in the first one, two, four, and then continue it on here and see what type of graph we get there. Um, yes, of course, here you go. So someone asked if I can go back to the first page. There it is. All right, good job, Muddy Fed. For those of you that have been able to get your graphs, there's a little section here that lets you write an expression. So lets you write the equation of these um, graphs. For the red one, let me hit that. For your red dots, if you wanna write an equation for that, which we sh that seems really familiar, 
to what we had been doing in our previous unit. If you're able to, you can write the equation for that graph. So remember, a line had the equation of y equals mx plus b. We can go in here and see what our m is, our slope. And if there's a y-intercept, we get a red line here, but that doesn't match up to what is going on with my dots. It doesn't connect my dots. So if you really want to try writing an equation, you can. Do you have to? No, but you can try it out, see if that works. But what I want you to do is make sure you're putting in your values for your blue pattern here. <clears throat> All right, so. Oh, good job, Marifid. You got the equation correct. Okay, for those of you that might have zoomed in or zoomed out too much and you're having a hard time seeing your graph because I can take a look at some of you, if you click on that little house, it'll take you to the default zoom. It'll like reset your graph and you should be able to see the image. So you're not too zoomed in or too zoomed out where you can't see it anymore. All right, perfect. So I see you guys, the majority of you do have the straight line and you're putting in your values for your second pattern. Our second pattern, the blue one, had the numbers 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. So what you wanna do is transfer those numbers over here, 2, 4, 6, 8, 16, and 32. Observe what is going on with all with your blue dots and your red dots. Two, four, oops, that's not correct. Two, four, eight, 16, 32. There we go. So observe what kind of graph we get when we now put in our values for the second pattern, our multiplication pattern. What shape do you see on the graph? What shape did we see when we had a red, our red points, our red pattern? So keep that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and open up the next slide where you actually go have to describe what we notice between these patterns. So you guys can go ahead and follow me to slide four. You're going to have to go back and forth between slide four and slide three to describe the similarities and differences here. So Describe what you notice about the similarities and differences in the rates of change between the two patterns, so how they're changing. Be sure to comment on how the numbers are changing and be sure to comment on how the graph is changing. So when you look at your tables, how are these numbers changing? Those are, that's your rate. And in the blue table here, how are these numbers changing? And what do you see in the graph between our red dots and our blue dots? We'll talk about their shapes. Are they the same? Are they different? So remember, go back and forth between slide three and slide four. Give me some similarities between the two graphs and the tables and some differences between them. Yeah, I can go back to slide one. If you want to take a screenshot of slide one, go ahead and do that. So for slide one, if you were joining us late, what you had to do is continue the pattern. So count the number of red rectangles you see there, write the number next to that. In the first one, we saw two rectangle shaded. Second stage, we see four rectangle shaded. You want to count them and then continue that pattern with the rest of those. 
Uh huh. You're welcome. All right. Oh, good job, Melissa. My Fed, very good. Remember, talk about what we see that's going on with the numbers. That's those are your rates, and talk about what's going on in your graphs. And if you're having a hard time, I can show you over here. Let's say you can't see my red points there. What do you notice on the graph for the blue, the red one, the red pattern? What kind of graph do we get? Yeah, correct. So we get a straight line here. What graph do we get when we put in just our blue dots? Something, <laughs> something that's not straight. Yeah, very good, that's, that's good. So it's not a straight line anymore. We see it doing something else. Yes, Jimena, very good. It is a curve. It's starting to curve. We notice that, hey, both of these are starting to look the same in the beginning, but then all of a sudden, the blue dots like skyrocket, they take off and they're way higher than these red dots. So that's also a difference. But the reason why that happens is our line is starting to curve. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next one here. There we go. So similarities. and differences, the graphs are different. You can say that one graph was a straight line. The other was a curve. And really, we really want you to observe that it's no longer a straight line. This is doing something else. But what else did we see with their rates, meaning their patterns? Okay, we still notice that one is adding, and one is multiplying. So I'll go ahead and show really quickly what we see there, what some of you guys are saying. Some of you are saying that they both start with two and four, which is correct, they're both shaded in, but are adding in one and multiplying in the other. One similarity is that a number two was used in both A and B, and the difference is that we added and we multiplied in B. Um, I really liked one of these that I saw Something different that I see is they are different colors. Yes, they each are different numbers. Some similarities is that they both have a pattern and the first two numbers are the same. Very, very good. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the last page. Oh yeah, sure, there you go. So, Page five or slide five is now open for you guys. We're just gonna take a look at our tables one more time. These are the exact same tables that you had on the previous slide, but now you have a picture here. What I want you to do is draw more arrows like you see here to show how the patterns of addition and multiplication are changing in the outputs here. And once you have your arrows and your patterns, I want you to go ahead and Look at the first table from grid pattern. That's the grid pattern A. And we call that a linear function, which you guys are familiar with. And we've talked about this in our toothpick patterns. Yes, I will in a second. And then the second table from grid pattern B is now an exponential function. So this is the new type of function that we'll be talking about in this unit. So grid pattern B has an exponential function. What you're going to do is explain in a clear sentence, how does a linear function grow? And in a clear sentence down here, you're gonna explain how a linear, how an exponential function grows. And that's gonna be present by what we notice from to get to two to four, from four to six, 
8 to 10 and 10 to 12. So you're generalizing. I don't want to see numbers like two or anything like that, but just general. What is like a general pattern we can say for a linear function? This was our linear function. And this is our exponential function. So draw your curves, write your pattern, and then complete those two sentences. I'm going to go back. Some of you want to see slide three. There it is. Good job, Jimena. Very good, Mari Finn. Okay. So what you're doing is just completing this table here. Write your pattern on the side. From two to get to four, they're telling us we had to add by two, which was correct. We did. Four to six, we noticed our pattern was to add by two. Six to eight, we're still continuing to add by two. Eight to 10, we're still adding two. And 10 to 12, we're adding by two there. So it should be completed this way. And your second table on the exponential side, our pattern that would go from four to eight was to multiply by two, four times two is eight. Eight times two is, also, is 16. And 16 times two is 32. 32 times two is 64. So your tables should have your arrows and the patterns should be showing there on the side. And I want you to use what we see here to explain how a linear function grows. And I can start you guys off here. A linear function grows by what? And then explain to me how an exponential function grows. Good job, Melissa. All right, we're about getting ready to wrap this up here. So this is the last page and this is where you want to make these connections. I'm going to show you what you guys are saying here. So we have here that a linear function grows by adding and increasing the numbers. Yes, that is correct. Um, a linear grows by a pattern that adds. Very, very good. By adding a number. Very true. Um, by adding two. So we're not always going to be adding two each time, but we are adding. So in general, how is a linear function growing? It's by adding a number each time. Very good. I'm seeing those numbers pop up. A linear function grows by increasing the numbers. Yes, we're increasing. And over here in the exponential side, a lot of you are saying an exponential function grows by multiplying. An exponential grows by a pattern that multiplies. Very good. So yes, that is the major difference you want to notice between the two. We have an addition pattern in our linear side, and we have a multiplication in our exponential side. OK, so we're about ready to finish this in. What I want you guys to do is hit submit on that. This is our last slide, so we should be completely done with this. I want you go, to go back into Google Classroom. Where it says Classwork, I want you to click on, oh, that's day two. I want you to click on Docs Shading Grids Day 1, which is the last assignment there. I want you to go into that assignment, click on it, and turn it in. It should be completely done at this point. Click on that and turn it in, and for those of you 
that are done, go ahead and move on to our next assignment, which is opened in our agenda. It's our week five notebook. If you click on that, that should take you to your notebook. All right, let me see how many of you are turning it in. Again, this is the right period, yes. We are done with that, so I want you guys to go into week five, click on view more, go into doc shading grids day one. There's two different ones because we broke it up in two pieces for you guys. Day one, and we have 10 of you. See, now I have to refresh it before I could see it. Something's up with my internet. <laughs> All right, to those 10 of you, good job, you guys. You guys are fantastic following directions. Okay, what we're doing next is we are moving on to our week five notebook. We're gonna make some connections here, tie everything up together. So click on week five notebook, page one. That will take you to your class kick notebook, our week five notebook, which is for our new unit. When you click on that link, I want you guys to log in. You guys should be logging in to save all of your work. I, on the other hand, do have to type in my name because it will change everything on the student side if I were to log in as a teacher. So this is what your notebook looks like for this week. All right, so give me a thumbs up if you guys are in class kick and have your notebook open. Give me a clap if you need more time. Thank you. Okay, I'll give you more time. Just turn that into a thumbs when you're ready. Thumbs up, I mean. All right, I'm seeing a lot of you joining us here on Class Kick. All right, there are so many accounts that we have now on Class Kick with some first names, no last names. And it takes forever to scroll through them. You can click on filter and it'll filter out all the kids who aren't. Um, you know. There we go. Perfect. And yeah, for those of you guys who are wondering, um, it, yes, I am going to be posting the video. So as soon as this class is done, it does take me like an hour or so, so that it'll download onto my computer. Then I have to upload it to YouTube and then put it into Google Classroom. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it will be in the agenda by lunchtime. So once you see video is underlined for Monday, you guys will be able to see it there. But that's where you guys will find all of our videos from now on. Mm -hmm. All right. Again, you should be joining us in Class Kick. Go to your agenda, click on Week 5 Notebook. It'll take you directly to Class Kick and you should open that up. All right, so um, we do have the uh, the slides that go with this lesson here. So any, any of these steps of completing these lessons are in your day eight notes, but I'm gonna go ahead Where did it go? There it is. Okay, give me a thumbs up if you guys can see that. I'm pretty sure it's sharing. Okay, good. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with our um, notes here. We are talking about our eighth day. We're on our eighth day of taking notes. We're talking about our linear versus exponential functions unit. 
And we started off by looking at how these two functions are different and can be similar, I'm looking at tables. So we're gonna observe a couple of things from your Desmos activity. And I have a little summary here in this little comic strip that I created. So in our Desmos lesson for today, we talked about the two different functions. And what are those? the name of those two functions? We have a student here answering them saying linear and exponential, two things you wanna know. We have linear functions and exponential functions. And how were these functions different? Well, we have this cool dude here telling us that they're different because one, when it's graphed, it's a line and the other shows us a curve. Was there anything else that we noticed between these two functions? Yes, that a linear function has an addition pattern and an exponential function has a multiplication pattern. So what we're gonna be doing today um, is taking it a little step further and just learn a little more about them. And that is through observing their patterns and figuring out two pieces of information. So for today's objective, at the end of this lesson, you should be able to say, I can distinguish between linear and exponential functions. So you can determine how you can see if a table is an exponential or a linear function. Also, you should be able to identify their rates and their initial value. And we're gonna walk you through those steps. So we're gonna start off by looking at a linear um, table. So let me get my laser pointer. So we're gonna take a look at a linear table, but this table is an increasing linear table. And we broke it up into two pieces. We're really only having you look at the increasing tables today and then the other type tomorrow. So how do we know it's increasing? Well, when we look at the Ys, we have a three, six, nine, and 12 on the first table. And when we look at the Ys on the second side over here, we have three, nine, 27, and 81. We notice the numbers are getting bigger as we move from one to the other. So we know it's increasing because they're going up. So how do we determine if one table is showing us a linear function or an exponential function? Well, the first step you wanna do is look at their patterns, which is what we were doing in that Desmos activity. So when I look at the Y values, what pattern is going on? When we look at our X values, it's just constantly going up by one each time. So nothing special is really going on there, but it is constant, which is a good thing. We're going up by ones. If it were going up by something else, we'd have to do a little more work. That's not good, but we're nice math teachers and we'll just give you these tables for now where we have just increasing by ones on the X side, but what you should be observing or analyzing is these values on the Y side. What pattern do we have go to get us from three to six to nine and to 12. So what can we say is going on here? Yes, very good. We're adding by three each time. So three plus three will give us six. Six plus three will give us nine. And nine plus three will give us um, 12. So we have an addition pattern. But more than just having a pattern, it gives us a constant rate of change, which is the slope. So when you have an addition pattern, we know that is a linear function. And by finding that pattern, you have found your constant rate of change, which is your slope. And that pattern of adding three each time, that is our slope. So we say plus three. So we're gonna go ahead and go on over to your class kick notebook. We're gonna carry that over. Our objective was to distinguish between linear and exponential functions. Oh, it doesn't wanna stay, there we go. Determine their rates and initial value. We started off by looking at an increasing linear function first. There are two steps we wanna take when looking at tables and that's the first one looking at their patterns we saw that the first table has an addition pattern. So what I'm gonna have you guys do here is actually go in here and draw your pattern. So from three to get us to six, we have to add three. Six to get us to nine, that is adding three again. 
nine to get us to 12, that is to add three again. So I wanna see you write the add three each time here to your notes. By finding the pattern, you have found that it is a linear function and you have found the rate. So the constant rate of change, which is your slope, is to add by three each time. So this is what you should have for now. All right. And notice we're still using the same color codes as the last unit, okay? We still notice we used this pink color for our rate, our slope. We're finding still slope, our rate, but just by looking for patterns this time. And since we know it's constantly adding by three, we know it's a linear function. How did we know it was a linear function? Well, when we put these tables in a, ta in a graph, we got a line. And the word linear shows us a line on a graph. So that's a big hint to help you guys determine if um, what kind of function this is. When we add an addition pattern, when we put a, this table into a graph and we see that addition pattern, we're going to be getting a line. All right. I'm going to go ahead and move you guys along to the next part here. In this case, we're going to be looking at the increasing exponential side. So what is going on from in our y values to get us from 3 to 9? What pattern do we have here? What can we do to that 3 to get us to the 9? What can we do to that 9 to get us to 27? And what can we do to that 27 to get us to 81? Multiply by 3. Yeah, good job. So in this case, if we multiply by 3, each time we have that consistent pattern multiplying by 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. 27 times 3 is, all, is 81. If you can't really figure that out, if you can't pinpoint the patterns, you could have just tried adding numbers. You're going to notice adding doesn't work this time. So we would have to try either multiplication, and in this case, multiplication works. If you have a calculator available, I would suggest using it. If for some reason you're not able to multiply fast enough, there's no shame in using a calculator. Okay, so now that we're looking at this table and we found the pattern, we see that it's multiplication. We know that's going to be an exponential function. Why is that? Because when we're constantly multiplying by a number over and over again, that's the same thing as having an exponent. You've learned that in sixth grade. So when we have a multiplication pattern, we actually call that a constant multiplier. So an exponential function that has a pattern of multiplication, we call that pattern a constant multiplier. And that constant multiplier in this case is a three. So we're going to go ahead and go back, carry those pieces over. We're looking at an increasing exponential function this time. There it is. I'm going to zoom out to do this a little faster. An increasing exponential table is going to have a multiplication pattern when we go from 3 to 9, to 27, to 81. And notice I'm using the dot for multiplication. And that is because I don't want to confuse you in the future when we start using x in our equations with the x here for multiplication. So I use the dots, and I recommend you guys use the dots now so you don't get too confused. But a multiplication pattern is a constant multiplier. And again, I lost, I thought I had it on. I'll put it in there really quick.
it should have a constant multiplier. And you guys are going to see that pop up right now. There we go. So if you're missing your constant multiplier, it should come up now. There it is. Go ahead and click on that, drag it over. There it is. All right, so when we are talking about an exponential function, look at this word exponential has the word exponent in them. The word exponent means that we're multiplying something over and over again. Well, we do see that we're multiplying the three over and over again, which is why we say that is a constant multiplier. We're constantly multiplying by three each time. So whenever you're looking at tables, there's always two steps you're gonna want to follow. The first one is to look at that pattern and determine if it's exponential or linear. If it's linear, then we call that pattern a constant rate of change. If it's exponential, we call that pattern a constant multiplier. So they're different. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get to that last step. Remember in linear functions, we had our equation y equals mx plus b. m was our slope, that pink color. And then our b was our y-intercept, which we called our y, um, our initial value. So when you have these tables, the second step you're going to want to take is to find your initial value, which is the y-intercept. We can still do that in this table. Notice in this table up here, there's a blank space that is colored in blue because we're making that connection. This space up here is your y-intercept. See, some teachers, again, we're, I'm trying to tell you that we're really nice to you guys, and we really are, because some teachers would just not even give you the blank here, and they would have you guys figure out what to do from this point to get the initial value. But I'm purposely giving you a blank here to remind you, oh, you have to take one more step to find the y-intercept. So coming back to your y-intercept, we, we remember that is where our line crosses the y-axis. And when that happens, our x is equal to 0. So if we ever want to find a y-intercept, we need to look at our table and see where is x 0. Well, your table right now does not have a 0, but we can actually go ahead and put in our 0 by following just our patterns. On the x side, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. We're going up by ones, but if we wanted a zero, we'd have to go back. So from one, if I go back one, I end up at that zero. So that's where x is equal to zero. And if I went backwards on the x side, then I have to go backwards on my y side. So think about what can I do to this three and go backwards to get my y-intercept. And think of this pattern we have going on here. If we were going forwards, we were adding by three. So what number up here would still continue with that pattern? You can also think about going backwards. So all we would have to do is instead of adding by three, since I'm going backwards, yeah, good job, we would subtract by three. So what is three minus three? Yes, good, zero. And you just found your y-intercept. But all of this information came from just that one pattern. That pattern gave us our rate. And this pattern is also giving us our y-intercept, our initial value. So our y-intercept is at 0, 0 if we we're looking at it as a point. But when we're getting ready to write equations, we just really want that number, which we say y-intercept at 0. So we're going to go back over here drag those pieces over. Our initial value can be found when we go backwards, when x is equal to 0. And in this case, it was at 0, 0. But I want you guys to draw this in. We knew we had to go back on the x side to give us 0, which means we had to go back on the y side and subtract 3. We went backwards to give us 0. All right. 
So we're going to finish off our exponential sign. We know we have a constant multiplier when we're constantly multiplying by three. That was our first step. But our second step is to find our y-intercept. And our y-intercept is called the initial value. And we can get that by going backwards and finding where x is 0. So you're going to look at your table. You're going to go from 1 backwards to get us that 0 on the x side, which means we're going to have to work backwards on the y side as well. So to get our y-intercept, we have to look at this 3 and think about going backwards, using our pattern and going backwards to get that y. So going forward, we were multiplying by 3 each time. We know that there's a number here that if we multiply by 3 gets us 3. Or you can think backwards and think of division by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, which means our initial value here is 0, 1. Our y-intercept is at 1. So we'll go back over here. We'll carry these pieces over. Initial value can find it when x is equal to 0, which means all we have to do is go backwards on our table using the opposite. So if I go backwards, that gets me to 0 on the x side. On the y side, 3. Instead of multiplying by 3, I'll divide by 3, and that gives me 1. So tomorrow, we're still going to be reviewing these two steps, which are very, very important for our linear and exponential functions when we're looking at tables. And these two steps are going to be continued throughout this whole unit. So first, when you have a table, you want to take a look at your patterns. Is it addition or is it multiplication? If it's addition, it's linear. If it's multiplication, it's exponential. But that also gives you the rate. An addition rate, an addition pattern is a constant rate of change, and a multiplication pattern is a constant multiplier. Once you have that pattern, it gives you the second piece of information you need, which is the initial value. And that means we would have to use our pattern and go backwards to find our y-intercept, your second step here for both of these. All right, we're going to come back tomorrow and we're still going to talk about this. So don't worry if it seems a little rushed or a little confusing. Um, we're still experiencing these technical difficulties coming back from spring break. Something's going on. Um, but we will be talking more about this tomorrow. And if you take a look at page three, for some reason, they look like it's the exact same page as page one. And that is intentional because we broke this up into two pieces to show you the ink, the growing functions and then the functions that are not growing, the opposite. Something else is going on there. So we're going to come back and talk about this more tomorrow. Um, but if you do feel like you understand it, what you can do is try today's homework, which is the linear versus exponential tables. It's another Google Forms that lets you know what you got right, what you got wrong. You want to type in your first name, type in your last name. You have tables. And you're just determining if that table is a linear function or an exponential function. You're doing the same two steps. Is it a constant rate of change? And what is it? What's your pattern? Or are we constantly multiplying? And then use that pattern to find your initial value. So there's um, two questions. And then you want to rate yourself. See how comfortable you are with this um, assignment. If you're not too comfortable, it could just mean that we needed more time today, which is totally fine. Um, but don't forget that you do have an exit ticket. This is what your notes should look like completed. So take a screenshot of that. Um, and we'll see you tomorrow. But don't forget your exit ticket, please.